Yeah, he's such yeah. a nice guy. And I think that probably maybe more so than any other writer that I'm aware of, he's really brilliantly articulated the ways in which the Democratic Party of the modern day has failed working people. Uh, I think that there's still a lot of folks maybe that are of an older generation that still have this idea of the Democratic Party as being a labor centric party. And, and Thomas Frank has done some amazing work in exposing the reality of that situation, you know, really going back to Bill Clinton and how it all started, but even up to, you know, the modern day with presidents like Obama and how they well, failed to even continue talk to the him working about class tradition of the Democratic Party. So I think, you know, his books, and especially Listen Liberal, uh, What's the Matter with Kansas and The People Know, have just done a brilliant job in, in exposing that and also helping to reclaim uh, the term populism for those of us who actually are on the left, those of us who actually are interested in liberation and not just empowering, you know, corporate America, essentially. Um, but yeah, the other thing about Thomas Frank is that he's just kind of such a delight to talk to. He still gets so enthusiastic mm -hmm. about all of these concepts when he's explaining them to you. I was fanboying when I was talking to him just because I've read so many of his books and he's from our hometown. It was cool that we, you know, just to, like, kind of engage with him. Um, but yeah, anyway, super nice guy. Yeah, this is pretty great. Did you have anything to add, JB? No, I just want to say that I, I think it's kind of remarkable, especially this day and age, that you have someone that's part of the PMC and he's able to use hindsight and be reflective of, yeah, this is where the Democratic Party is and this is where it shouldn't be. And this is where the Democratic Party party should go. And so I, I honestly think that it, it's uh, refreshing that somebody who is, in a sense, pretty comfortable in life, also recognizing mm -hmm. that the Democratic Party is really screwing up. Yeah, and I think that goes back to his original thesis in What's the Matter with Kansas, right? Where I think growing up in Kansas, and this is certainly the case with me and Gavin as well, although we grew up much later and sort of the like, uh, you know, resurgence in that e heavy evangelicalism, you know, Tea Party conservatism was really all the rage when I was first getting exposed to uh, politics as a child. But uh, you really do kind of see and you get exposed to why people hate the Democrats, right? And it's for this dumb kind of shit that we're going to get into later, the like paternal finger wagging and all that kind of stuff that the Democrats are known for while also not solving any problems. And then it's easy to get sold an empty bag of goods by the, you know, phony fake populist Republicans uh, if you've been insulated in a, you know, rural or, uh, you know, red state your whole life and you don't have exposure to a lot of other ideas. Yeah, absolutely. And before we get into this clip, which again happened on um, Bill Maher's program, HBO. Yeah, Bill Maher. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, I, I did want to play this clip, which which may have actually been from the same um, the same episode. This is just a clip from Bill Maher's little monologue issue, or part of the show. And I thought it uh, was worth playing um, just in case anyone wasn't aware of the tone uh, being presented lately on Bill Maher's show. He's basically gone full boomer, if you're not aware. But before we get into the um, Thomas Frank, I wanted to quickly play this just for the just for the cringe. You think someone 80 is hopeless because they can't use an iPhone? Maybe the one who's hopeless is the one who can't stop using it. Mm. You think I'm out of it because I'm not on Twitch? Well, maybe I get Twitch. But I just think people watching other people play video games is a waste of fucking time. <laughs> to which everyone obviously is... replied, watching Bill Maher is a waste of fucking time. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, he's, like I said, total boomer energy. This, this is basically what his show, show has uh, evolved into or devolved into. You know, back in the day, he was more of an edgy liberal back in the days when his show was called Politically Incorrect. Um, he was actually, you know, a little bit more on the cutting edge. And, and I know he's definitely always had some issues with things like Islamophobia and shit like that. That's totally inexcusable. But it really is, I, I think, worth I think he pointing supported out. Nader at one point. Yeah, back exactly. I, he, yeah. he really has fallen far. You know, he used to really be more radical. And it's so clear now that he's just you know, incubating in this uh, in this elitism and, and and all of this privilege uh, that it's totally tainted his ability to have any sort of a, uh, uh, a good take on what's going on, I guess. But I think that that is a good segue into the next clip, of course, which is of Mr. Thomas Frank absolutely schooling him. Uh, this is crazy. I'll just play it. I don't want to spoil anything, but uh, I really enjoyed this. I think that we're... There's something that we're overlooking here, and that's that, that's sort of been lurking behind all this, which really is that, the, I mean, there really has been an important historical change. We, you were talking about James Carville a minute ago. Yeah. Carville, of course, most famous for getting Bill Clinton elected 
uh, you know, a Democrat elected president in 1992. We all celebrated, hey, look, the Democrats are back. Yeah. What, do, what does Clinton do? Basically, one of the, the first and most important things he does is NAFTA. You go back and, you know, what I was doing today, I spent a whole lot of time reading Clinton's speech that he gave on the, when, when he signed NAFTA. And he was basically saying, workers, you're screwed. You have to get used to it. This is a new economy. It's an economy for the highly educated. That's whose prosperity matters. And we're going to retrain all you people whose lives are ruined. This guy then does away with the welfare system. Remember, they called it welfare reform. Well, he didn't do away with the welfare system. Oh, hell yes. System. No, he... It, well, as yes, they abolished it. It was, it was overturned. They have now. something called TANF now. Mm-hmm. It's, we it's still a load of had shit. welfare in this country. Uh, AFDC, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Then he goes around, deregulates yes, Wall Street. Yes, he cut a lot of people Deregulates off. Wall Street some more. Deregulates Wall Street yet again. <laughs> Okay, this is this Glass is a Eagle. transformation. Did he get rid of Glass Steagall? Mm-hmm. Sorry, yes. Glass Steagall. Yes, they they overturned that. Yeah, yeah. So that was one, of, one, of, one of the many the right. many ways. Clinton the definitely right. moved the he, Democrats to the center. What's your point? Uh, no, he <laughs> moved the Democrats to the right, and he abandoned well, us to the, the center. We're talking or rightward to the center. <laughs> you, you think that's the center? This country didn't want those things. Well, the country didn't want to deregulate Wall Street, deregulate so telecoms. He, People regard these moves that Bill Clinton made as absolutely genius. And I'm here to tell you that they 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 no. redefined who the Demo- oh, absolutely they Some redefined people. who the Democratic the Party was in a disastrous way, in a catastrophic way. And I am hoping and I think Biden understands it, although Biden was went along with all, everything that I just described and then some, right? Biden was the you know, the bankruptcy bill under George Bush, Biden was mass incarceration again and again and again. But Biden seems to have, have, under, have, have has, has grasped the folly of all this. You know, this, is, this was a you know, world historical mistake, a blunder that the Democrats made back in the 90s and continuing up until quite recently. So, yeah, that was fucking brutal. Chef's kiss until he says that Biden's realized his problems with it. That's <laughs> yeah, where Thomas Frank yeah, and yeah. I disagree. That is but true, other that is than true. that, oh, my God, he just yeah. hammered Bill Maher's balls with a baseball bat. I mean, that was... And so many people have this nostalgia of Bill Clinton that they, they can't seemingly tie it down to a policy necessarily. It's just this, oh, it wasn't the Bill Clinton years great. The Democrats seem like they were on top at that point. They seem like we were the cool party and, and all this stuff. Why are you shitting on Bill Clinton? And then you, here comes Thomas Frank with the facts. And, 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 and Bill Maher has nothing to say. You know, What do you guys yeah. react to this clip? It's, Bill Maher only feel, feels like that it's because Bill Clinton made his life comfortable <laughs> because he was rich even in, during the Clinton years. So, yeah, of course, he's going to be fondling Clinton's balls just because Clinton would made it nice for him. But it's so stupid because the thing is, is that he has not one iota in his brain thinking about all the shit that people actually had to go through, especially the people who were in the Midwest and had to endure NAFTA and then losing their jobs and then being shipped overseas. So all that shit about, oh, well, Bill Clinton, the Clinton years, they he just moved us to the center. No, dipshit. He moved us all the way to the right. That's what Clinton was there for. And so for Bill Maher to do this, you know, and, and, and Bill Maher is just an edgy liberal that says things that elitist liberals want to say, but they don't have the balls the to boomer say it's edge yeah. yeah, that's exactly what he is. Yeah, didn't he say like the N-word like five years ago on his show? You well, no, yeah, he so he he also said yeah he said that five years ago. I think he said it. Um, and then he had Ice Cube on the yeah. next week. Yeah, <laughs> and Ice Cube just obliterates him. You know, mm-hmm. dude, I remember that's like a throwback to like another era almost. That seems so long ago, but I guess it really wasn't that long ago. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It's, okay. just, it's, it's revisionist history that Bill Maher is engaging in. Well, they all are engaged in it, and that's what I think is so important about a guy like Thomas Frank, and you you uh, alluded to this when you were talking about it. It's the fact that he has the comfort, he has the clout, he fits in in that community, right? He, you know, he could, he founded the Baffler magazine. He knows his way mm-hmm. around. Uh, he has a PhD in history from Chicago University. This guy has credentials. He has a pedigree. Okay, when he says he can get invited on Bill Maher's show, and it's so amazing. That he's like, yeah, I'm going to go get invited on Bill Maher's show, dress up in a suit and tie like a professional man, and then fucking fillet you. And tell the and, and Bill Maher's audience might have been quiet. Everybody at home that was watching that is nodding along with fucking uh, Thomas Frank. Yeah. Because even if you're 50 years old and you are a boomer and you hate cell phones and you think people like me and Gavin are like fucking destroying the earth with our liberal politics, like you're going to fucking 
understand that, yeah, everybody got hosed by NAFTA. Yeah, the welfare in this country isn't the same if you're a single mother trying to make it. We don't take care of single mothers in this country at all. We we give you know we barely keep them from starving to death and call it a success. Now that's what that's what Bill Maher was trying to defend. He was like, oh yeah, we give them Section Eight housing vouchers so they can live with rats and cockroaches, and we can fucking sleep at night by pretending that we're housing people. Actually, yeah, you know so what? J j just to point that out, okay, I would like to tell Bill Maher. I would ask him. How long is the waiting list for Section 8? Does he know? It's five years long. So Bill Maher doesn't even have a leg to stand on in there. So he can shut the fuck up. Yeah, and it's not true. Agree. Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Are you gonna, gonna, yeah, I agree. I'm not, what's, what's surprising about that video is, like, <laughs> Thomas Frank says, yeah, Bill Clinton cut the welfare, welfare state. And then Bill Maher goes, so he went, uh, so yeah, so what? We cut some people off. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, your, liter your literal elitism is fucking showing. And, like, I'm from Michigan. So, like, the entire Midwest was fucked over by the Clintons. I mean, that was the manufacturing center. I mean, you literally can walk out of high school, get a job, work at the plant for 30 years, have your pension, have a retirement set, and you have all your benefits. And then Two when you're weeks working, you're vacation. Exactly. And when you have a kid, that kid can work in the factory too for the summer and pay off college. The reason why I know that is my grandma did it. She has a pension. She has a retirement. My dad he used to work in the work in the plant too when he was in college. All of that went away with the Clintons. Yeah. And, and so the reason this really shows that how comfortable Bill Maher is and doesn't understand the entire political scenario. Yeah, and Thomas Frank is just so necessary of a voice, I think, because there is an ungodly amount of liberals that really do just pin Trump's election on racism and ignorance. You know, they think that those are the only reasons why someone like Donald Trump would get elected, that half of this country is just so goddamn stupid and racist that they, they wanted Donald Trump. And, and to some extent, yeah, there's a lot of racist and there's a lot of stupid people, no doubt about that. But what they completely leave out of that equation is NAFTA, is the destructive policies of the Clinton administration. The fact that they were pushing TPP when Obama left opened, office and Clinton was going to pass it. And it opened the door for when Trump was campaigning for him to say, look who I'm running against. It's the wife of the woman that took your job and now she wants to pass another trade deal. It made it the easiest layup of all time for him. Uh, and again, of course, he, he definitely brought out the worst qualities in humanity. There's no doubt about that. But running... The, the 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 wife of Bill Clinton, you know, responsible for NAFTA, who was not exactly running in opposition to trade deals, you know, that was a terrible move, and, and that calculus is just completely left out of the story from ninety nine percent of reporters or commentators. They just don't talk about that. They just chalk it up to racism and ignorance.